Hi, I'm Janine, and you're watching Acts 2 for God's Glory. And uh, this next dream that I'm going to share, I had a little over a year ago on November 23rd, 2022. And I, I just held off recording it for a little while because I wasn't sure if the Lord was going to give me any more parts to it. But I have two parts, and I think that it's time for me to share this. So, um, and this next dream is a warning dream, and then after I tell you what I saw, I will share with you what to do, okay? I mean, if you encounter this kind of thing. Okay, I saw a man lying on a surgical table and he had all these electrodes attached to him and he was thrashing in pain and distress and discomfort it was actually distressing to see it now in the room I could see the room it was a small room and there was all this electrical equipment with lights and buttons and stuff on the walls and there was a person in the room doing these experiments or an entity I really couldn't see but I knew there was someone in the room doing experiments on this person and he had all these electrodes attached to his brain I'll show you the picture should be on the screen there attached to his brain and he was on this surgical table and he it was very painful whatever he was going through so that was really a sad scene okay so then i started to drift back to sleep and instantly i saw this bright flash of light and like out of the darkness this bright flash of light and then i woke all the way up and wrote stuff down about the dream. Now, I can tell you that this bright flash of light, because I've had this happen a few times, is usually um, an angel that's over you, protecting you while you're getting a certain dream. I've had where I'm going to sleep, and I could sense there was something demonic in the atmosphere, and prayed and asked the Father, send your mighty angels, Lord, send your warring angels, and within seconds, I had a brilliant flash of light and I heard in my ear like whooshing wind, like like a woo, something intense just flew by you and with this bright light and then that demonic thing disappeared. And so I know that the Lord answers our prayers. So when you have, you know, where you sense anything demonic, you just call the Father, you know, to protect you. Now, if something confronts you directly, you can command. If you're a born-again believer, then you have authority in Jesus to um, rebuke it and command it to leave in Jesus' name. If you're not a believer, you're in big trouble and bigger trouble than that. So, you know, because now you're vulnerable and you have no authority and they can do what they want. So there's no reason to live in a tormented life or a life that doesn't have eternal life guaranteed when Jesus makes salvation available to everyone who believes and calls on the name of the Lord. Okay, now they, the Lord gave me a follow-up dream. This is about a month and a half later. He gave me a follow-up dream that I believe is connected to that dream I just shared with you about the man on the table with the electrodes and there was like something being done to him that was very painful. So on January 6th, 2023, so just a little over a, a year ago, I had another dream and I believe these two dreams are connected and in this dream, I saw a spacecraft that was small an oval in shape and it looked a lot like you know uh, these flying objects that we don't know what they are and they can go in and out of dimensions and so there were I saw three 
entities standing in this small aircraft and they were standing up against the wall. That's what I saw. Now I couldn't tell because they had a body. I mean, they had a shape. I could only see shapes. So I couldn't see. They, they kind of looked like people in there, but I could not see faces. I could just see that there were three entities with some kind of body standing in this small thing. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share, and here's what I wanted to tell you. I want to read you a scripture, and then I just want to say that if you, because we're having a lot more demonic, supernatural activity than ever before. Portals have been opened that were never to be opened, and so on. And so, um, if you ever have an encounter, because this happens, where a gray creature approaches you or anything that has a dark spirit, even if an angel were to come to you, you'd want to say, are you from the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins? And if they're not, they'll leave. But, but a lot of people are seeing these ugly creatures. There have been lots of abductions by these awful creatures. But I'm telling you, if they come to you, you, first of all, you need to be a believer. And I'm going to share Baby Sees of Salvation next so that you can receive Christ today if you're not. But if, if you are, or once you are, then if something like that were to happen, you do not have to be a victim to it. You say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave and I apply the blood of Jesus over myself and the blood of Jesus comes against you. And then if they don't respond instantly, say, Father, in Jesus' name, send your warring angels right now. And I mean, in a split second, it will happen. So, you know, I mean, I can't guarantee nothing bad will happen to you, but I'm just telling you, this is what you do. And I know the Father does defend his children, but we do need to trust him and believe. Okay, so I'm next going to share the ABCs of Salvation with you. All right, so the ABCs of Salvation, that's just a simple way of saying this. And so the good news of Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Okay, so first of all, did you know God loves you? He does. Did you know God wants to bring you back into the family of God? He does. And when I say back into the family of God, I say that because when he created Adam and Eve, that was the purpose. He made us triune beings in his image, and he, we are unique. We're so unique that when God the Father sent Jesus, who even before the foundation of the world, had already they had already determined the Trinity, that there was going to be a need to cover sin once and for all, and that Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, was going to be the one to come to earth. So God wasn't surprised by all that, but, but you have to understand, and it mentions this in Hebrews, that Jesus didn't come to die for the angels that sinned and fell. He only came for humanity, and you have to be 100% human to qualify, and he was 100% human. So, um, Okay, so let's read on this. Do you, you, you do have a decision to make, and today is the day of salvation, and it'll affect you for eternity, because when you die, the one who owns you, because we're eternal spirits, is the real us, the one who owns you comes to get you. So, you may not think you belong to the enemy, but if you haven't received Jesus, and you know you're his, then by default, by rejecting him you automatically go to the other side so it doesn't have to be that way so let's read some scriptures John 3 3 unless one is born again of the Spirit he cannot see the kingdom of God meaning get into heaven these are words of Jesus John 14 6 Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father no one comes to the Father except through me and 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says that Christ died for our sins. He took our punishment according to the scriptures. See, he fulfilled, some say, 300 or so prophecies of 
from the Old Testament regarding his first coming as the suffering servant. Anyway, and he was buried and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. So see, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and sin has separated us from God. But Jesus came to bridge the gap to be our mediator. He shed his, his blood and gave his body to pay for our punishment so all who would receive him we are not held guilty. We don't have to do that. We're covered in the blood and righteousness of Christ. And he washes our sins away. So let's read 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God has made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, he was perfect and without sin, to become sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Jesus, in him, in, in Christ. And here's a promise, First John, so all believers, if you pray to receive Jesus, and I read the prayer, all believers have access to 1 John 3, 1. See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children. And that is what we are. And you can also read Galatians 3, 2 about us being children of God. And then Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God through Christ, by the way, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So if you're, you might be saying, well, but I've fallen back. I accepted Jesus as a child or I never actually said this prayer. I didn't know you needed to say a prayer. So it's very simple. Okay. Basically, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved, but I'm going to walk you through this. Right now, you can do it right now. A, so these are the ABCs. A, admit you're a sinner. And then B, believe in your heart. And C, call on the name of the Lord. So A, Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages or the penalty of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, so then the B is believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Okay, those were your sins on the cross. Those were my sins on the cross. Those were all of humanity's. But you have to say yes to him and say, I want you to be not just my savior, but the Lord of my life. And then you're brought into the family of God and you have all the benefits of everything Jesus did for you. And your sins are blotted out by his blood. So Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth, you do have to say with words, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with the mouth that you confess and are saved. So, okay, we now that we know that information, what do we do? See, call on the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31, believe, that's with your heart and all, your, all that you are, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your redeemer. He is the way. To the Father, and you shall be saved. First Timothy 2 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So just say this prayer with me, real quick, and I have it here if you can see it on the screen. Um, so, Lord God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I'm so sorry for my sins and I want to turn away from them. I believe Jesus is your Son. And he died on the cross to take my punishment for sin. I believe that he died, was buried, and that God, the Father, you raised him from the dead on the third day. And I put all my faith in Jesus as my Savior. I believe I am washed white as snow by his precious blood, and I choose to follow Jesus. Father, I thank you for eternal life right now. In Jesus' name. So, Lord... Our friends, the Lord is calling you, and He wants you in the family of God. So just say a prayer from the heart like that and mean it and start reading the Word. I would encourage you to download the Blue Letter Bible app because it has a daily Bible reading plan that's really easy to follow, or and you can do a two-year plan if that works better for you. 
and you have all kinds of tools and I have lots of tutorials on how to use the Blue Letter Bible app. You can go into cross references and commentaries and Strong's Interlinear Concordance. So it's a great tool to actually not just read the word, study the word. So let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone watching and I pray, Lord, you rebuke fear. Lord, that you lead all those into salvation who have said this prayer or want to say this prayer. Today is the day of salvation. Father, I pray you send your angels to protect them. Lord, I pray you teach them about their authority in the name of Jesus through your son and the power of his blood. Father, I pray you bless and protect all your children in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you and God bless you. If you have any questions, feel free to put a comment in the, um, in the YouTube thing. Okay. Bye-bye.